Hey everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Last week on the show, we made a little heart. And then we turned that little heart into a little square. Well today, we're going to turn 12 of those little squares into a little car seat blanket that we can obviously see is full of lots of love. This baby car seat blanket is 50 by 65 centimeters or 20 by 26 inches. So it's just the right amount of coverage for a baby in a car seat. It comes together relatively quickly and today we're going to show you how I've joined the squares together and also the kind of border I've put on it. Now of course you can join your squares and put on any kind of border that you like but this is based on how much yarn you would probably have left over after making a dozen or so of these sweet little heart squares. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, grab our stack of little heart at the center granny squares, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a baby car seat blanket together. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make our lots of love car seat blanket, you're going to need 12 heart at the center granny squares. You'll find the link to this tutorial in the description box down below. So you're going to want 12 of them. These are six inches each. So each one of these squares is six inches. I've used 100% acrylic size four medium worsted weight yarn for this project. You're going to want an additional 75 grams, roughly 135 yards of the same yarn, uh, especially the same color as your border to join them together and to add the border on to the rest of the blanket. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook you're using is the same one you would have used to make your squares. It's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you don't miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. The first thing you want to do is lay all your squares out so that they are three squares across and four squares tall. So here's the bottom half of the blanket, but it will be three squares across. So four by three. We're going to sew or join our squares together. You can use any joining method you like, but I am going to sew my squares together, and that's how I've allotted the amount of yarn I require for the rest of this project. So I'm going to be using my yarn needle and lengths of yarn to sew each of my squares together, and I'm going to sew all of the squares in a length of four together. So a row of four, a row of four, and a row of four. I'm going to sew all those together first before I sew the individual rows together. In order to make sure that you always are sewing the right seam and you're always making sure that your hearts are always going in the right direction, so you want to, that's why I like to lay out the blanket um, completely before I start joining squares together. So these are the first two squares I'm going to join in a row of four. This is the seam between the two squares that I'm going to be sewing. So I take the square that's on top and I fold it right sides together onto the one that's on the bottom. So now this heart looks like it's upside down but the back side of it is showing. So right sides are pressed together. Take a length of yarn and thread it up in your yarn needle. Then you're going to take those two squares and find the edge corner space of both of them. And we're going to join the yarn through the chain stitch that's immediately adjacent to the shell. So it's the first chain stitch on each square that leads into that corner space. So make sure you get them both. Bring your yarn almost all the way through. We're going to knot our yarn. There we go. So you just want to knot your yarn and do it twice. Not too, too tight, but make sure that it's not going to come undone. If you have really slippery yarn, you might want to do that a third time. And then you're going to weave that little tail in later. In order to join your squares, you just want to use each set of stitches all the way across one side. So you begin with the first set, which would be top stitch of the first double crochet of that shell, make sure you get the whole stitch, and the corresponding one on the other side. You're going to use the whole top of the stitch. Don't sew very tightly, 
Make sure you're getting both of them. When you get to a little fasten off knot like you have right here, it's still on top of a stitch. So just get underneath that knot, treat it like a regular stitch, and then you get to your first chain one space. So the chain one spaces help keep you on track. You know if, you're, if you've gotten off track by the time you get to a chain that sits on top of a space and maybe you're still trying to work another stitch, you know you've gotten off track somewhere. So work in sets, little work each shell and then get to the chain one space and that will help keep you on track so you don't miss any stitches and your squares align nice and neatly as you sew across. Just busily <laughs> work through sewing each set of stitches together, nice and easy. Don't rush, take your time, and I'll hook up with you when we get to the end of this row. When you get across to the other end corner, you want to work your last stitch into the top of the first chain leading into that corner of each block. So that'll be the last one, and I like to work through this one twice, just so I have something to create a knot with. So I'll go work two sort of stitches through that same set of chains, and then I can create a knot that's nice and tight, and then I can weave that tail in underneath some of the stitches. So I'm just going to, I'm still looking at the wrong side here. I'm just going to bring this yarn down to some of those double crochet. I'm going to weave it in back and forth and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Now it's time to add the next square in this row. So there's our first seam done. You just move it down, take the next square, place it on top of the one sort of in the middle. So this is going to flop down a little bit here. But make sure they're, they're all pointing in the same direction. So all your hearts are facing up. So the right side is facing up. The heart is in the right direction. And by that I mean it's not sideways or upside down. And then you do the same thing. Fold the top one down over top of the one below it. Pick them up. Join your yarn. Knot it in that corner chain and then just steadily sew all the way across to the other side. Knot it and weave in your tails. And you're going to do that for all four in this row. Here is the first row of four all sewn together. So they're all still facing in the same direction, so all the hearts are in the same direction, and they're all seamed across the middle row here, or the middle seam. So you're going to do two more rows of four just like this and then we'll be sewing all of those rows together. All right, there are three rows of four squares each all sewn together. So now we want to sew together the actual rows. I'm going to take the first two on the right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the middle one sitting facing up and I'm going to take the one on the far right that's facing up and flip it over on top of the middle one so that the right sides are facing, so the wrong sides are facing out. And because this is the seam that we want to sew, you're going to line them all up together. Get your needle and long length of yarn. And then you're going to do the exact same thing you did with the squares. So you're going to knot your yarn in the two corner chains. So each chain that leads into the corner that correspond with the other one. Make sure you tie a nice tight little knot at least twice, three times if you have slipper yarn. You can weave that tail in later. And then you start sewing exactly the same way you did with the two squares. So you work through each set of stitches all the way across. So whether it's the top of a double crochet, so a pair of double crochets, 
or if it's the top of a pair of chain ones. So you work across each set of stitches and once we get to a little junction or an intersection of squares, I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, I've sewn across the first set of squares in my two rows and now I'm at a junction or a seam where there's two sort of squares sitting next to each other. So you should have a set of chains on either side. So do those two chains. And then you'll probably have a couple of seams. So there's a seam where these two squares were sewn together and the seam where the other two squares were sewn together. I'm going to put a stitch right through that seam. So right underneath, make sure you catch the sewing. So the whip stitches. I'm going to put a stitch right through the seam. And then I'm going to pick up the chains on either side that are right next to the shells. And then I start all over again, working across each set of shells, all the chain one spaces, matching them all up, sewing across, and do the same thing when you get to each of the junctions. So work the chains on either side of the last shell, put a stitch right through the junction, so right through the seams of the other two squares being sewn together, and then a stitch through the chain on either side right next to the next set of shells you're going to sew through. And that will keep things nice and even all the way across. So now we have two rows sewn together and by sewing through the seam, so by putting that little uh, one stitch through the seam, you get a nice solid um, join. So there's no sort of spaces in that corner little area where all four of the squares would meet, so it looks nice and solid. So now we want to add the, the last row. So what you can do is you can take the one that's on the left, make sure once again everything's facing right sides up, and you're going to take that one and fold it over top of the existing sewn together rows. And you can either flip it and start from this corner, or you can start from the other corner. It doesn't matter, what you want to make sure is happening is that you're sewing, so you might want to look at it this way too, you're sewing this line, so you want to take the smaller row and flip it over top of the already sewn together rows so that the wrong side is facing out on both sides. And you can either start at one corner or the other, not your yarn like you did before in those two chains on the end, so all the way across making sure that you put a whip stitch in the seams so that you get that nice solid join look. And that's all you need to do to attach your last row. Once you have all three rows sewn together, you should have something that looks like this. So it's three squares across and four squares long. All of your hearts are facing in the same direction. And now it's time to add a little border. We're going to take our border color. I'm using pink. And we're going to start with a slip knot. When joining yarn to add a border, onto a blanket, especially one that uses the granny shell stitch, I like to start in a corner space. So pick up your blanket. You can use any corner space to start with. And we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. We're going to use the basic shell stitch all the way across. I'm going to show you how that looks when you get to, for example, a little intersection here between a couple of squares. So let's start by chaining three just like we would if we were working on a regular granny square row. That chain three counts as a double crochet. Finish off that shell into the same corner space by working two more double crochet. Chain two for a corner. And work one more shell or three double crochet into the same corner space. And every chain two corner space, so the four corner spaces on this blanket all get treated the same way. Shell, chain two, shell. We're going to chain one in between shells so that you have a little bit of a spacer. You can weave in your short tail later. And just like a regular granny shell sort of border or a granny shell row, you're going to jump right into the next space and work three double crochet 
or a shell. Don't forget to chain one, and you're going to work a shell into each of those chain one spaces all the way across until you get to this one. When you get to the big intersection here, just pause and I'll catch up with you. All right, you've worked the last shell chain one into the last chain one space across that square, and now you've gotten to an intersection. So this is sort of a junction where you've got two corner spaces from the original squares sitting next to each other, and of course they're joined with a seam. So this is where we get to a seam. Rather than working a shell into this chain two space, and one into this chain two space, so that you end up with two shells that are too close together. We're going to skip using those two spaces and use the seam instead. So make sure you've chained one for a spacer after you worked your last shell, and skip this space. Find some of the whip stitches in that seam, so even if you have to go down a little bit, get underneath some of those whip stitches, and work a shell into the seam, so the seam between those two granny squares. And it might feel a little bit funny, but what will happen is that it'll keep your, keep your shell border from buckling. So that's another reason we like those little chain one spacers. It gives us just a little bit of stretch and a little bit of space. Then once you've worked a shell into that seam, and that I feel that makes the seam look nice and tidy. You don't see the little dip between, see that little dip there that happens between the squares? It disappears because we've worked a shell right over top of it. So you're going to skip that little space that was originally a corner on a square, and you're going to jump straight to the next chain one space. So you're going to work a regular shell, three double crochet, and a chain one into each of those chain one spaces, and when you get all the way across to this little thing where you've got a corner and then a seam and a corner, skip the space, work your shell into the seam, skip the space, and then continue. So you're still working shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across, but you're working a shell into the edge of your seams to cover up that little dip and to keep your edge from buckling. Here's what we've got so far. So we joined our yarn and you completed the corner by working the rest of that shell, chain two, shell, all into that same corner space. I haven't woven in my little tail yet, I will do that later. You've worked shell, chain one into each of those chain one spaces all the way across. When you get to a seam, so where you've got two squares butting up against each other, rather than working the little spaces, you're going to work a shell directly into the top of that seam. So make sure you get underneath one of the two of the whip stitches there. Work the shell into the edge of the seam. And that covers the little seam dent, so there's always a little bit of an indent in between where the squares get joined. When you work a shell over top of it, it neatens it up and it disappears. And that's what you should have so far, all the way across your blanket. When you get to the next corner, as you would with any corner here during the blanket border, you're going to work shell, chain two, shell, chain one, into that corner space. So three double crochet, chain two for the corner, another three double crochet, all worked into that same space, and before you leave it, chain one, because you want to be able to keep that consistent little spacer all the way across. So there's your, there's your corner, shell, chain two, shell, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to work shell, chain one, shell, chain one, into each of those chain one spaces all the way down. When you get to a seam, just like we did with the previous side, you're going to work the shell, chain one, into the edge of the seam. So skip the two little spaces on either side of it, put your shell in the seam, chain one, and continue. You're going to continue that all the way around for this little border row. When you get all the way back to the beginning, so where we, be, we, where we began our border row, make sure you work your last shell, chain one, find the top of that chain three, and join with a slip stitch. And that is one row of the granny shell stitch.
completed. That's the first row of our border. And you'll notice that it sort of evens it out. So because we have two rows of pink butted up against each other, now we have the same amount of pink running along the edge. But we have a little bit of pink yarn left, so we're just going to work a finishing row of single crochet all the way around. The single crochet will give the blanket a little bit more strength and it'll just thicken up that little edge just a little bit more. We're going to start where we joined. So we're going to chain one to begin this final row. You're going to single crochet in the same stitch that you joined in. Single crochet into the very next stitch. Now sometimes it looks funny. It looks like it's a bit seg so sort of split up. So make sure you do get a single crochet into the top of that next stitch. It'll be the stitch that's the middle of the shell. Single crochet into the next stitch. And then that brings us up to our first corner. So into a corner space, we're just going to single crochet twice, chain two, and single crochet twice more. So two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. When you're leaving a corner, we're not chaining anymore, we're going to be working a single crochet into the top of every single stitch and every chain all the way across. So when you're leaving a corner, pull back so you make sure that you expose that first stitch because you don't want to miss it. There should be three single crochet worked across the top of every single shell because a shell is three double crochet. So a single crochet for each stitch in a shell. And when you get to a chain one space, you can work the chain, so you can either put your hook through that chain and work the single crochet into the chain, and I like to do that just because it kind of keeps its bottoms even with the rest of the single crochet. But if you're in a bit of a hurry or you find it a bit troubling because maybe your stitches are on the tight side, you can just work the single crochet into the whole space. But don't forget to catch the first stitch of the next shell on your way out. So go ahead, work a single crochet into the top of every single stitch and chain one all the way across every single row. When you get to a chain two corner space, work two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet into it, and that's all you need to do for this final row of the border. When you get all the way back to the beginning, make sure you work your last single crochet into that chain one, don't skip it, and that should bring you up to the single crochet that you began the row with. Now it might look a little funny because there's a chain one there that you started with. Skip the chain one and just slip stitch to join to the top of that single crochet. And that is it, nice and neat and tidy. You can take your scissors, fasten off, And then take a moment with your yarn needle, flip your blanket over, and you can weave your tail back and forth in up underneath some of those stitches from your last row. So your last row of single crochet, just weave those sort of the tail back and forth underneath those stitches until it will not come out. So if you've got really slippery yarn, let's say you're using like a really satiny yarn, Make sure that you've gone back and forth at least three times underneath those stitches. You can go all the way across here. Remember not to pull too tightly because you don't want to pull your border out of alignment. Back and forth. There we go. And you're all done. So now you've got a nice tidy little border. It's sort of a nice extension on the pink frame that each one of our little squares has. And when you get, uh, if you're going to give it away as a gift, you can certainly take a moment to hand wash it and lay it flat, pin it down to, to sort of um, let it dry in a nice blocked style so that you can keep your edges nice and straight. Or you can just lightly steam block it. And we'll put links to how to wash and block and steam block in the description box down below if you've never tried that before. So like we said, 
If you are going to give this away as a gift, you might want to consider blocking it first. And we'll put links in the description box down below to our wash and block um, tutorial and also just our steam blocking tutorial if you're new to doing anything like that. Um, and that's just so you can make sure your edges are nice and straight and there's no rippling or anything because sometimes that can occur when you're adding a border and putting a bunch of squares together. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed making this sweet little baby car seat blanket <laughs> along with us this week. And we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye!